Hi there, welcome to BA Consulting Pro. In today's video, we are going to discuss about query diagnostics for Power BI. What is query diagnostics for Power BI? What are the different types and levels of query diagnostics? How to record it? How to use it? How to apply the different settings? And also the query folding part in query diagnostics. Everything you will get to know in today's video. So what are you waiting for? Stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'll let you know everything you need to know. If you are over here for the very first time, please consider to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. In today's session, you would learn about the query diagnostics for Power BI, how to record query diagnostics, how to read query diagnostics, and also understanding folding with query diagnostics. Not only that, I'll also let you know what are the different types of query diagnostics as well as what are the different levels in query diagnostics. Everything you will get to know in today's video. So let's get started. The very first question comes into our mind, what is query diagnostics for Power BI and why do we need it? Query diagnostic is a powerful new feature that will allow you to determine what Power Query is doing during authoring and in some refresh workflows in Power BI Desktop. Query diagnostics can tell you what sort of operations are being performed and when, what data sources you are connecting to, the native queries being emitted in certain cases, the time spent on different actions and much more. So all in all, you will get to know all the traces about how your data workflow is working in Power BI with the help of query diagnostics. And it's going to be very helpful when you are looking into your Power Query and you think there is some performance issues or it's not working as expected. Now question comes, how to use this query diagnostics tool? Well, for that, you have to go to your Power Query. Under Power Query, you will find the Tools tab. And under Tools tab, you will find the different options for Query Diagnostics. Let's discuss them one by one. But before going further, let's discuss about the Diagnostic options. Well, once you will go into your Microsoft Power BI Desktop, over there, you will find your options and in that you can go to the diagnostics and if you are not willing to go over there if you will go in the power query editor there also you can find the same let me show you how to do that so currently i'm on my power bi desktop application here i have created a simple model i just get the data from the sql server adventure box 2019 and over here you can see this model is pretty simple if you want to update these cards properties you can do that these are the part of the new formatting options available in power bi desktop and it is the latest version july 2021 if you want to make some changes over there in the naming convention or anything that's also you can do but over here what you can see i have some dim tables as well as one fact table which is over there and this is the dim employee table which is the disconnected table right now into my data model that's all i have now, if I'll go over here in the transform data tab, once I'll click, I come into the Power Query window. Under the Power Query window, you will see this tools option on the top, and here you will find the different options available for the query diagnostics. Now, there's one more way how you can go to the options. So one option is over here, which is the diagnostic option. You can click on this and you will find this window. So, here you will see all the options available for you and if you want to check and check any of these you can do it according to your requirement but not only that if you will minimize this window and over here if i'll go to the file and there are options and settings under the options you will get the same window how there is a one option over here as well the diagnostics and it is the same that you are getting under your power query window now question comes what are the different types of diagnostics well there are basically two types of diagnostics one is step diagnostics another is session diagnostics as you can see over here in this window there is a step diagnostics session diagnostic and diagnostic options so you can either call them three but i don't count as a diagnostic options as a part of the types of diagnostic because it's basically the options and settings where you can tick untick 
the what are the different options you want majorly there are only two kinds of one is step diagnostics another is session diagnostics now under this one you will find the different diagnostic levels that is aggregated and detailed so now let's discuss what is aggregated and what is the detailed one now you will find over here two types of diagnostics level one is aggregated another is detailed under aggregated one diagnostics will be aggregated attempting to surface information at a user actionable level information will be aggregated for readability and understanding by grouping rows to approximate connector operations overall this means you will get your aggregated data whenever you are trying to look into the data for the diagnostics that you have just collected the second one is detailed one in the detailed one you will get the more detailed information so in the detailed one row diagnostic information which all rows maintained you will get all the information over here now we also have additional diagnostics that means we have performance counters and we have data privacy partitions so under the performance counters it captures data related to each query execution including resource consumption and usage snapshotted every 500 milliseconds it also includes information on CPU, memory, and input output. So that's about the performance counters. Now, if we talk about the data privacy partitions, basically it's the logical partitions used to isolate steps for data privacy. That's all it is. So these are just the theoretical information about this, but we will see how to actually use it in a while. Now comes to the part how to record your query diagnostics. So let me show you how you can do that. Let's go to my demo file where I'm gonna illustrate you how you can utilize it. So as I have already shown you my data model, now I'm gonna go to the transform data tab from where I'm gonna start how to record it. So just click on this transform data tab. Once you will click, your Power Query window is gonna pop up. So you can maximize this one and we will come under the tools where we have the different types of diagnostics available. Here you will see one you have diagnostic step another is start diagnostic. So what is the difference between the diagnostic step and start diagnostics? Start diagnostics is basically going to collect all the data whatever operations you are going to perform over here but if you narrow down it to just for one single step that means for example you just want to apply one simple filter or remove one column or something like that in that case only use the diagnostic step it's going to narrow down your operation nothing else so if you want to see the whole picture go to the start diagnostics if you just want to perform it for one single step then go for the diagnostic step so what i'm going to do i'm going to perform a couple of operations and we'll see how it's going to work so for that, first I have to click on this start diagnostic options. But before that, please click on this diagnostic options. And here you will get some very important information. First, if you want to enable tracing, you can do that. If you want to bypass geocoding cache, you can also do that. There's a crash dump collection as well, where it's gonna dump all the traces. You can enable, disable, depend on what kind of permission do you have. Because over here you will see enable in report and query editor may require running as admin so you have to think about it you if you have the permission then only you can do that otherwise not initially microsoft only released the first option but later they came to know that there are so many other people who are working on this power bi desktop who don't have that kind of permission level so they enable the another option which is enable in query editor does not require running as admin so always check this and then you can select what kind of information or label or the diagnostic you need and then click ok i'm going to cancel it because i have already set up for myself now you know what is the diagnostic option let's get started so over here i'm gonna click on this start diagnostics once i click on it you will see another option is getting highlighted over here which is stop diagnostics so we don't need it right now what we are going to do we are going to perform certain operations so in that case i'm coming on this my dim customer table over here i'm going to select first my occupation so here's my occupation column and out of many what i'm going to select i'm just going to select one and which is the management one let's click on this 
So over here, I'm going to group it by first name. So let's group by first name. And over here, I'm going to say count. So I'm going to see how many first names are there in this one. And I have already filtered it out on the occupation. So it's going to give me the count rows. And this column is not going to highlight it because for this operation, it's not available. Just click OK. And here you can see the first name, which is Claudia, and the count is 4. For Henry, it's 4 and so on. So these are the different operations that I just performed. Now I can stop it. That's it. That's what all I need to do. Now you will see there is a diagnostics folder is over here. And under this group, you will see detailed diagnostics. So over here, you can start reading what is the ID, what is the query. Query means on which table it has been performed. Then there is a different step. What are the different steps that I performed on it? Category, data source, kind, operation. So it's very important. There are the different operations you will see over here. Execute query, generate preview, get results and all those. So if you want to filter it, you can do that according to you. And also, if you will come, there you will see this exclusive duration, how long it took. And then data source query, what is the query that performed on this one? And there are certain other steps. And over here, you will also see it's also going to give you the resource name. So what is the resource? So all those operations you can perform. I can just say I don't need the null one. I can even perform these the simple operations that you can even perform on another tables too. Just click OK. And there's some additional information, row counts, partition key, which is available over here then process so all these kinds of information you can find it over here if you need to know more about what are the different columns what are the information they are giving you i'll provide you the link in the description section you can go and check that so this was the detailed one but what about the aggregated one so this is the top level view over here so in this one you will find the same data but on an aggregated level so i'll suggest you if you want to plot some graph or something then use this one this is going to be very much helpful for you. The last one is the partitions one, which we already discussed. What is partition, the logical partitions. And here you will also find this expressions. So expression is basically your power query, how it works, what kind of metadata or something it get it from here. What is the start time, end time, etc. Once you are done with it, you can simply come over here, close and apply. And now if I'll go to the fields tab, you will find over here that there is nothing. Why there is nothing? Because you won't get these tables over here. So if I want to see where this data has been stored, I'll click on this open crash dumps trace folder. And over here you will see you will get all this information available for you. And from this one, we can see this diagnostic data. So I'll come over here and I can just sort it by date. And this is the data that I need it. So if you would like to open this, you can right click this. Let me check its property. It's a JSON file. So let's do this. Click on this, copy this path close this close this and here i'm gonna get a data from a json file so here you can see you have this json option connect and we can just paste our folder and here this is our data for diagnostic aggregated open this And here you have your table where you have all the data that you are looking for. And now I'm going to change this to diagnostic data. So what I did over here, I went to my folder where all the data has been collected. And from there, in the file format over there is JSON. So I just got that file from there and now I have my file data with me. So if I need to check my ID, their execution, their path and so on, I can do it over here. So I can just pick one visualization over here.
So this is how you can get your all the data but also if you would like to check something in the visualization form like some graph or other things you can do that. Just click on the new page over here and there I'm gonna see my categories and then I want to see the duration. So for this category just click over here I want to see the duration for which category what was the duration so this is my exclusive duration so let me check this one over here so now you can see for which category how long it took and even if you want to check it by the operation you can put this in legend and now you know what are the different operation it performed how long it took etc so it's totally up to you what you want to visualize over here but overall this was the picture how to record how to read and how to visualize it on power bi desktop reading query diagnostics i have already shown you this how to read it what are the id start time query step data source query exclusion duration percentage row count etc there or there what are these different fields are over there and how to visualize it Let's come to the last topic here. We are going to understanding folding with query diagnostics. You can see some of the operations on your screen right now. These operations I have already performed during the demo. And now one of the most common reason to use query diagnostics is to have a better understanding of what operations were pushed down by Power Query to be performed by the backend data source, which is also known as folding. If we want to see what folded, we can look at what is the most specific query or queries that gets sent to backend data source. We can look at this for both SQL or O data feeds. So you can perform certain operations and once you will perform certain operations, after that you will see the request and the response into your detailed view. And those are gonna let you know like, okay, what's actually happening with your Power Query or when the data is going to and fro and how long it's taking or kind of something is going to happen over there so you will get to know everything over there even in these steps what is over here on your screen the filtering is just relatively trivial so it is going to be minimum impact but grouping is going to have a significant impact and if you are removing any column that's also going to have a significant impact and as i showed you earlier there is a query section as well where you can find okay what query has been performed over there so don't forget to check that out and try to learn more and more about this as long as you are working on power bi and the way you are going to work on this query diagnostics it's going to be very helpful for your future use cases or the errors or performance tuning I hope you liked today's video and join us for more exciting videos and don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest videos.